Tell me, Sean, would they have shot you? Shot you if you were white? Sean Bill, they took your life. It broke my heart to see those pictures of your children and your wife. Go ahead and cry. What is the proof? Go ahead and cry. Yeah, well, the bullets tell the truth. Sean Bell, yeah, we can't pretend. Sean Bell, when will this madness end? Sean Bell, what are we to do? Just ring our hands. Pretend that it's not true It's terrible It's terrible It's terrible Terrible night Sean Bell And so the story runs Sean Bell mm, Just too many guns Sean Bell Solar Kane, Sean Bell, the bullets tell the truth. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. We're broadcasting on over 700 stations on Pacifica and NPR stations, low power FM, college and community radio stations, on public access TV and PBS TV stations. And we're broadcasting on both TV satellite networks Dish Network Channel 9415, Free Speech TV, 9410, Link TV, and on Direct TV Channel 375. And we're video and audio podcasting at democracynow.org. Org. Our headlines are also available in Spanish for any radio station to take. Um, over 180 radio stations around the world are. We're broadcasting today from St. Louis, Missouri, from PBS station KETC. I'm Amy Goodman. The head of the UN's nuclear watchdog group, Mohamed al Bardai, has criticized the United States for withholding intelligence that it says showed the construction of a nuclear reactor in Syria that Israel bombed in September. The International Atomic Energy Agency chief was critical of both the U.S. delay in releasing the information and of Israel's bombing of the site before the IAEA could inspect it. Syrian officials say the site was an unused military facility under construction. On Thursday, top U.S. intelligence officials presented lawmakers evidence they said proved Syria was building a nuclear reactor with North Korean assistance. Among the evidence they displayed um, were pictures said to have been obtained by Israel, allegedly taken inside the facility, showing the reactor core being built. Officials said the U.S. believed the site was nearing operational capability, but they declared low confidence the site played a role in a Syrian nuclear weapons program. Program. This is the chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Michael Mullen, briefing reporters in Washington. That this facility was being built secretly and against international convention, and that it was destroyed before it became operational, are the key points to remember. It should serve as a reminder to us all of the very real dangers of pr proliferation and need to rededicate ourselves to prevent the spread of weapons of mass destruction, particularly into the hands of a state or a group with terrorist connections. Meanwhile, the Syrian ambassador to the United States, Imad Mustafa, dismissed the allegations. Can you believe, can anyone be as gullible as this, as, as an allegedly strategic site in Syria with, without a single military checkpoint around it, without barbed wire around it, without anti-aircraft missiles around it, without any sort of security surrounding it, thrown in the middle of the desert without electricity, uh, plans to generate electricity for it, without major supply plans around it, and yet it is supposed to be a strategic installation, and, and people don't even think of it. Yesterday, in the White House presidential statement, it was stated to the letter that that was a secret location. Hmm? And yet, every commercial satellite service available on Earth was able to provide photos and images of this so-called secret Syrian site for the past five, six years. I think something is very absurd and preposterous in the whole story. 
For more, I am joined on the telephone by Scott Ritter. He's the former U.N. weapons inspector in Iraq, author of Target Iran, The Truth About the White House's Plans for Regime Change. Scott Ritter, welcome to Democracy Now! Uh, thanks for having me. Your evaluation of this whole in, uh, situation, the information that has been presented to Congress on Friday. Well, first of all, we have to be concerned about the evidence. Um, we have interior photographs and exterior shots and nothing that links the two. Um, and so on the surface, I would say that if you're bringing this evidence to a court of law, it's strange to mention the rule of law when we speak of American foreign policy lately, um, you would have trouble having anybody say, yes, this is definitive evidence that links the allegations to the specific site in question. Uh, but let's just assume for a second that the data is, in fact, accurate. Um, I have to take exception with the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff when he says that the alleged activities are against international conventions. Actually, they're not. If Syria had, in fact, been constructing the reactor they've been accused of, um, they were in total conformity with international law. The non-proliferation treaty, nuclear non-proliferation treaty, of which Syria is a signatory, requires that facilities be declared to the IAEA only when nuclear materials are to be introduced to these facilities. That a facility under construction um, is, is not a declarable item. And so it's absurd to sit there and say that just because Syria and North Korea were pouring concrete, uh, that they are somehow breaking the law. This, this notion that the reactor was on the verge of becoming operational again is is absurd. The you know there would have to be literally thousands of, of, of pounds of pure graphite that would have to be introduced to this facility. And there's no evidence in the, in the destruction. You know, there were a number of reporters who went to the site after it was blown up. If it had been bombed and there was graphite introduced, you would have a signature all over the area of destroyed graphite blocks. There would be graphite lying around, etc. This was not the case. Uh, I don't know what was going on at this site. If the images are accurate, it appears that uh, Syria was producing a very, very small research reactor, um, but it is not a, a reactor usable in a nuclear weapons program. Syria was not violating the law, and if there were concerns over this reactor, a, a simple uh, referring of the material, these photographs, to the International Atomic Energy Agency would have produced an insistence on special inspections that would have had the inspectors on the site actually determine what was going on and a peaceful resolution of the problem. This shows that the United States and Israel have a wanton disregard for the rule of law. And this is especially critical when the United States is holding up the non-proliferation treaty as a standard in which we hold Iran and North Korea accountable to.